Hey guys, so today I'm going to go over the collection that I purchased for $100, but then there were some Pokemon cards. If you assume the Pokemon cards around $40 and the poster is around $10, then I got this for about $50. Bucks. Now, I did go over the card value, so it's not like I'm some type of MTG finance guru. Although some people will try to fake it. And I found out that there is one card that saved me from this collection. So assuming this collection is $50. I actually already uh, showed you the card. Here you just have bulk, bulk legendaries. It's not like none of these cards are particularly valuable. But to get people you know, in the fat packs or... Right now I'm selling these binders. And one of the binders I'm going to try to sell is a whole binder of leg just legendary creatures. Not anything like too valuable, but this would make sense. So probably the retail price, so we can't really use retail here because no one's going to buy just random command, like all these random commanders on retail. But in a binder, I can probably sell it for 40 bucks if I were to really buy this at buy list maybe ten dollars for all of them and that's kind of like aggressive there's no specifically uh, in this particular pile there's no valuable rares or mythics uh, these are very these are pretty much the definition of bulk cards i mean i think anna fez is like a dollar retail but yeah none of these are particularly impressive uh doxos but I'll go over, you know, some of the other cards. So it was a decent buy. It definitely wasn't a great buy. My local, previous local game store I went to, they always bought stuff at 10%. I thought that was really greedy. And, you know, in Houston, where I live, 10% is probably what most people pay. I feel like it was good for both parties because I definitely... I thought this card would be valuable, but it is not. Uh, I vaguely remember it being a good... This is a very good EDH commander, but it's not that valuable. Um, Stitcher, here's some Mythics. Astling, some old Evening Tide. Some more uh, Dragon Maze. Dragon Maze. Uh, this card I didn't check up, but I'm almost certain is not valuable. So DC. A lot of them is incredibly uh, recent cards or commander deck reprints. And obviously when you have a commander deck reprint, there's not that much. This is an interesting one. I have not seen this dude for a long time, so I'm not positive about his price. Uh, Temple, show rings is a few bucks and then some land. So probably all of this, if you were to be a store and give you can buy like a dual land for very close to what the retail price is because you can sell it easily. This is uh, very difficult to sell because, well, it's not difficult to sell them individually, but you would be sitting there selling this forever, right? And what do you value your time at? If you value your time very highly, then that's not going to be a good solution to you. So I got these commanders. We actually are making a, so my interns, I'll talk a little bit about my interns. One is from Georgia, he's from Emory. And the other one actually, she lives in this neighborhood and she's just back this summer with her parents. And they got really excited about magic cards and got really excited about Pokemon cards, especially. I think in the afternoon video, I don't know when I'm going to schedule videos like this, but I will show you. Uh, the Pokemon collection that I recently got and all these cards were very recent and then as well as they give you a way a stack of codes. So when I buy in codes, I actually buy them and it comes in an Excel spreadsheet. But yeah, so this particular batch of like for a casual player, this is not bad. I mean, this is exactly the definition of what a casual player wants. They want a stack of legends, but I would probably say to a store, to me, maybe this is worth $10 only because I can put them in a binder and then move them. Now we'll go on to some other stuff that was, so if you wanna test yourself on MTG Finance, you can go to the original video 
and see if you can identify what is going to save me from this set. So these are all about dollar retail. Um, and Eldrick used to be a lot more. Uh, Anafeza, Kiki, um, some gods. Raska from Dual Deck and Scrap. So probably about $10. So we're at 20 bucks right now, which isn't bad, but that's definitely not something that you're hoping to get uh, when you're you know, a store. Okay, right, these are worth uh, between anywhere between two, $3 to $10, but most of them are worth less. Titania, that's a good one. That's definitely something that I was surprised to find out its price. Uh, this one's a good one too. You have Nella Legend. You have uh, a foil EDH commander, possibly. A Nissa from a starter deck and a Grin Grin. So probably if I were to take... So actually this is, an, this is not a dollar. This would probably be five dollars. Uh, if you take 50% of the retail, which is generous for these cards. But again, let's be generous here. Uh, this is probably... $15, $10 maybe. So you have 10 and 10 and 10. So you have $30 of value. And next you have cards that are between, I believe seven and $10. You have Riku. Uh, this one's really good. You have two Fossas. And Fossa is around $9 retail right now. Garuk is around 10, I believe. And then two Dromokas. Uh, the mythic version of him. So you have six cards worth maybe 60 retail, so $30, maybe 20 if you really want to be kind of you know, uh, picky as to prices. 20 is what, so that's the price a store is going to buy. A store is never going to buy for retail. You have shipping, you have time, you have uh, to postage, you have supplies, and you know, so we're probably at break even. Now imagine my surprise when I found that these two cards are worth what they are worth. Uh, this one is around 18 retail and this one I think is around 15 retail. No, I mean rats, I get it. People really like rat decks and this would be the rat lord to end all rat lords. But wow, that was the saving grace of this collection. Otherwise, even as a store, this would have been a really bad buy. Now, Pokemon aside, you know, I don't really know the price of Pokemon cards that well. Uh, so maybe if you go look at the binder and you look at the Pokemon cards, but I think that they are definitely worth $40. There's some GXs and EXs and trainers. And I'm sure that it's just a combination of all of them. Uh, there was a lot of codes, about 40, 50 codes. And I know they go for about 20 bucks just to codes. If you get 50 codes, go for about 20 bucks. But these two were the saving grace. And now when I bought the collection, I bought it from a friend. I don't think anyone knew what these were worth at the time. Um, I was doing it more as a favor to him. But wow, this is, this is a pricey card. Holy smokes, like, holy smokes, this is a pricey card for what it is. And then obviously this one I kind of knew about because I knew that the as long as the commander decks are not reprinted in the anthologies, they're going to go up in price. And this is a very unique commander, mainly because it does zombies, which is good. And I've seen deck lists for this. I've seen deck lists for both of them, but for one to be, I think 12 to 15, I think this is 12, 15, and this is 15 to 20. There you go. Um, even if you discount it by 50% as a store, because that's what you should be doing. You should not be buying at full retail and trying to resell at full retail. That's not going to happen well. You are subjected, you are subjected to this 50% rule, which means that uh, everything combined, I definitely didn't lose money. So I, I definitely didn't lose money on this collection, which is fantastic. But the only reason I safely can say I didn't lose money is because these two random cards that I did not know were valuable until, you know, it was getting pretty desperate because when I was typing in the cards I didn't know, I really didn't expect this to come up. I wasn't even going to type it. But then lo and behold, this is the most valuable card in the whole collection. 
is this rat lord. <laughs> you gotta love MTG, right? MTG Finance. Uh, so I, I made out okay. I think from retail, I probably have 45% is what I bought, 40, 45%. But again, a lot of this is gonna be really difficult to move just because there's a chunk of it. Uh, now the Pokemon stuff, uh, we are carrying Pokemon as well, uh, just because everyone's playing it. Now, if you view this as like, oh, cool, the interns have something to play with now, uh, that's probably what we're gonna do. Now, I don't think we're gonna resell this particular collection. We're just going to uh, give it to the interns and one of them goes to U of H. Um, so she like, she could possibly, we could possibly make her a job offer, not this year, but next year. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, bye guys.